After you park your car and buy your ticket, you walk down a gravel path to get to the chateau. Chateau de Chenonceau is the second most visited chateau in all of France. The most visited, of course, is Versailles. As we walk toward the chateau, which spans the river Cher, notice the moat and gardens. The gardens were planted by two of the chateau's famous lady inhabitants, Diane de Pontier and Catherine de Medici. As we approach the chateau, you will notice on the right a tower that was part of the original mill built in the 10th century, but the bulk of the chateau was built in the 16th century. The original chateau was extended over the river Cher by Diane de Pontier. Diane also brought other excitement to Chenonceau. Fireworks. The first public display of fireworks in France was right here at Chenonceau. As we walk through the massive carved wooden doors, you will see the coat of arms of Francois I, under which the inscription reads, Francois, by the grace of God, King of France. On the left, upon entry, is the guardroom. It has a huge fireplace and on the wall a number of 16th century Flemish tapestries depicting scenes from chateau life, a request for marriage, and a hunt. The chests are Gothic and Renaissance. During the 16th century, they would have contained silverware, crockery, and tapestries. You enter the chapel through huge carved wooden doors. The leaves of this oak door represent Christ and St. Thomas and repeat the words of the Gospel according to St. John. Lay your finger here. And from the scriptures, John 20, 27, you are my Lord and my God. The original stained glass windows were destroyed during World War II, and these windows were made by an expert craftsman in 1954. Inscriptions were left upon the walls of the chapel by Mary Queen of Scots Scottish Guards. On the right it says, man's anger does not accomplish God's justice. It's dated in 1543, and do not let yourself be won over by evil is dated 1546. This is Diane de Pontier's bedroom. Diane was a favorite of Henry II, and though not his wife, she was a mistress of Chenonceau. But you will notice above the fireplace of the letters C and H. C represents Henry's wife, Catherine de Medici. H, of course, represents Henry. Some say that the entwined C's and H's on the ceiling represent a D. Or Diane de Pontier. The chairs are covered with rich blue leather. Notice this tapestry, Flemish of course, one of the two in the room depicting animals and birds from the New World. Next door is the library and then on to the gallery. In 1576 Catherine de Medici built this magnificent ballroom gallery upon the addition of the chateau which had been built by Diane de Pontier. It's 196 feet long and 20 feet wide, lit by 18 windows with sandy chalk tile and slate floor and exposed joist ceiling. The ballroom was inaugurated in 1577 during festivities hosted by Catherine de Medici in honor of her son, Henry III. Each end holds a beautiful Renaissance chimney of which the one surrounding the southern door, which leads to the left bank of the share, is only decorative. The medallions on the walls were added in the 18th century and represent famous people. It is interesting to note that during World War II, many people took advantage of the privileged location of the gallery, whose southern door provided access to the free zone, while the chateau's entrance was in the occupied zone. That is to say, free France was at one end of the gallery and German occupied France was at the other. Now we go down to the kitchen. I like kitchens, and this one is huge. The kitchen is at the lower level and would receive supplies by boat. The platform at which the boats would tie up was called Diane's Bath. I wonder why. Here you see the utensils of the kitchen and cooking pots. Here's the oven with bread baskets on the wall. There are plenty of pots and a pump for fresh water. Of course, the fireplace is properly decorated. This is the fireplace in the bedroom of Francois I. On this fireplace is inscribed the motto of Thomas Bohair, 
one of the early owners of Shannon So. In French it says, if the building is finished, it will preserve the memory of the man who built it. Also in this room is the beautiful 16th century Italian chest of inlaid mother of pearl and ivory. It was a wedding present offered to Francois II and Mary, Queen of Scots. Other fine paintings and cabinetry fill this room. Next is the living room of Louis XIV. The salamander reminds us of Francois. The salamander was a mark of Francois I. The paintings in the room are notable, like the Princess of Rohan, and especially this one of Louis XIV. This gilded frame is carved from only four pieces of wood. This painting is of a classical subject. This is Catherine Bocanet's hall. It has six 17th century tapestries representing hunting scenes. We enter the bedroom of the five queens. Yes, I said five queens. Catherine de Medici had two daughters that were queens and three daughters-in-law that were queens. Hence, the five queens bedroom. The ceiling displays their coats of arms and the fireplace is from the Renaissance period. I move between levels of a chateau by way of the stairways, some of which are quite decorative. This is a lovely painting of a chateau. And this is the bedroom of Louise of Lorraine, who was known as the White Queen because she dressed in white, the color of mourning after her assassination of her husband, Henry III. She was one of the five queens. And remember, Henry III was the son of Catherine de Medici. Notice the painting of the fireplace is an oil painting on wood of Christ with a crown of thorns. From the upstairs window, we get a great view of the rear of the original tower of the mill that became Chateau Chenonceau. This is the hotel in which we stayed in the village of Chenonceau. Only about 300 people live here. Our room has a great view of the garden. The town was empty with very few people on the streets and we saw very few tourists about. I think they come to see the chateau either by bus or train and never set foot in the village. There was a great little bakery on the corner where we sometimes ate breakfast and picked up food for our roadside picnics. Perhaps one day we'll return to Shenandoah.